Vaiguji ka khao sa, Vaiguji ki fateh. Welcome to the Seek Channel Studio here in London uh, for the last word. And today with me is Harinder Singh of the Seek Research Institute. I'd like to welcome Harinder Singh to our program. Vaiguji ka khao sa, Vaiguji ki fateh. It's good to be here. Yes, um, so you've just done a talk at uh, Central Gurdwara, Khalsa Jatha London, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been talking about how to unify everyone and how to keep things back to Khalsa, to yeah. get everyone looking into the oneness of the Ik Omkar, getting everyone unified again. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you think that's going to happen? Well, the only way it can happen is the way it used to happen, which essentially is when people are connected to the Shabad, which is the wisdom contained within Guru Granth Sahib for us. Until and unless we understand that and start practicing it, which is visible in our uh, daily behavior, mm. we will not get unified. We will have superfluous unifications. Yeah. So, you know, the, and one of the examples I had given in my talk was that whether it's in 20th century or in 18th century, whether it is during genocide time or green revolution time, the thing which really works is when people unify under the banner of Guru Granth Sahib, when they take the teachings and instructions from the Guru, not from individuals or just Chathebandis. Mm. So but the, we have this problem within uh, the Sikh community that we have so many different various groups and they seem so ready to fight with each other uh -huh. and to unify and deal with what is the actual threat to Sikhism. Yeah. Well, you know, the, uh, the external threats have never really destroyed us. Mm. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, whenever there have been genocidal campaigns, people have predicted we will be wiped off from this earth, including uh, uh, professors like or uh, writers like Kushwan Singh in his 1961 book said that Sikhs will not see the next millennium. The point is these kind of predictions come whenever there's external threat. Issue has been that uh, we have had too much delusion in our, in our gurmat or the doctrine, and that's the biggest threat to us. And I'll give another example of that is that, you know, Akal Takht has been destroyed so many times. Yes. But since 1995, now we have reduced Akal Takht status in our mind, in our psyche, and that's a bigger threat. That's the biggest issue. So when we start destroying things even at a doctrinal level, at our mind level, at a Punjabi and Sikh psyche level, that is the biggest threat. And that usually happens when we are not connected to the Shabad, when we are not really listening to the instruction of the Guru which are contained for us in Guru Granth Sahib. Rather, we start copying what other traditions and other people are doing. Hmm. It's interesting what you said about uh, Sikhs reaching the next millennium, because when the British first ran, a, when the British first ran across uh, the Sikhs, uh, they were studying us with great fascination because they thought we were a dying race. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, everyone says that. That's why, you know, every South Asian ruler has said that. In 18th century, they declared us that we were, you know, criminal and illegal, and they said no Sikh is left. In 19th century, it happened. In 20th century, it happened in the 80s as well. Now we are a new millennium. In fact, you know, one of the theses of Sikhi actually is when people are eliminating us, even physically, the reason they're doing it is because we are strong. Hmm. Because we are steadfast in their belief. Your forefathers and your foremothers, my forefathers and foremothers, we are the descendants of people like Pai Taru Singh, in, not in biological sense, but in value sense. Hmm. And why was he tortured and martyred? Because he believed in certain values. Because oh, uh, What are those values? Values which make us free. Freedom from spiritual slavery, economic slavery, political slavery. And that's what used to unite us. Exactly, you know, which is what Guru Nanak Sahib taught us in everywhere from Guru Nanak through Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj. And institutions were developed by each guru to make sure we become mentally free, spiritually free, politically free, economically free. So, you know, this is what moksha or mukti is for six. Hmm. This is what marjivada is, that you are free while you are alive in this world, not the world beyond. And this is what our traditions maintain historically. This is who we remember in Ardas. This is how our shaheeds used to be. This is how our writers used to be. This is how our, how our people who are incredible sevadars and jathedars used to be. This is how the renaissance of Sikhi came about, that we became free at each and every level. Yes. Actually, on to uh, the topic of shaheeds. Yes. 13th of March was uh, the day when Shaheed Udham Singh, uh, a Sangat member of the Khalsa Jatha, British mm -hmm. Isles, yes. uh, shot uh, Michael O'Dwyer. Yeah. in Caxton Hall yes, and very sanely just said, here I am, take me, do what you will. Well, you know, uh, I think uh, sometimes people say there are coincidences in life. I am one of those who believes that there are no coincidences in life. This is a great lesson for us 
that you know, a lot of our community runs away from political activism. And here is somebody in London who came here and he was not even in sick form, right? Sometimes we mm. internally start arguing who's a sick, but those who are killing us, they never argue about that. <laughs> Anyone who says he's a sick, she's a sick or he's a sick. Yes. So the point is, yes, he was the member. He has his last meal at Punjab restaurant here in central London. Yes. And he came to Gurdwara here. Uh, and with, even if people don't know his incredible history, even with all his misgivings, even if you have seen his regular Punjabi movie where Raj Babur is acting it out, yes. he in fact shows in on his mission on the last day, he stands in front of whatever the popular culture is, which is a portrait of Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj, and he says, help me and get success in my mission. Hmm. And this is us. These are the Punjabis who embrace Sikhi, and this is how we were used to be, that we are not about vengeance, but we are about justice. When the laws of the land fail, when there are... Uh, extremities adopted by the governments of the times against injustices, then we figure out our own way, not by talking to institutions, not by creating conspiracy theories, not by acting, by doing stupid things, but by doing, by having conversations with Wahiguru or Guru. Yes. I'd actually like to uh, sort of increase awareness amongst our viewers mm -hmm. of uh, Michael O'Dwyer yeah. was a governor of Punjab. Yes. He was not just uh, the governor when the Jalian al massacre took place, but he was also gave the order uh, for uh, warplanes, uh, albeit in their basic form, to bomb Sikhs who were protesting in Gujranwala, and uh, they, they also strafed the Sikh population yeah. there. A very modern technique in warfare at the time yeah. to be using planes on ground attack, right. something which had just been recently you know, picked up in the uh, First World War. And uh, that's a sort of oppression we got. So we, when we talk about Saddam Hussein having killed his own people, the governor of Punjab was killing Punjabis. Yeah. And uh, there was cause and there was reaction. Yeah, and you know, uh, there's a reaction, there's planning, there is a, it's not just emotional, there is a strategy involved, and this is not a reactionary all the time. There is also certain times, certain elements, certain institutions had tried to get justice, but those things weren't working. And you know, we are sitting in England. This is a place where Sir Thomas More went against the emperor to say there are times when the law of the land fails and the cosmic law takes over. So Udham, you know, and you know, Udham Singh is a great reminder to me in my personal life because he was hanged on July 31st, which is my birthday. Hmm. So I tell people, you know, it's a reminder that we belong to that tradition in the free world, in the free thinking way, regardless of our personal adherence to the level of Sikhi. We all know the ideals of Sikhi. We know what Guru Nanak through Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj came here to do on a particular mission to free us from spiritual and political corruption. Again, in this world, that's what's happening. And similar things, incidents are taking place. In fact, this week there have been conversations on this very topic here in London as well. Yes, of course, we've got the whole issue now uh, once again in India. So uh, the chief minister, Beyant Singh, mm -hmm. was uh, assassinated. Yes. Uh, and uh, we've got the whole topic once again. It's We've got the history repeating itself. So we've got uh, Balwant Singh, uh, and uh, he, he's presently in jail. Uh -huh and uh, was uh, handed a death, uh, a death sentence to be served on the 31st of March. But right. there seems to be a lot of political shenanigans going yeah. on around it. Uh, and it's that, actually, which I want to look at. Uh, is uh, How is this being made into a political game by the politicians in India, by, sure. you could say, the um, Badal regime and the Congress regime? Yeah, and other uh, outfits of the Indian government's administrations, you know, so this is not just limited to the political parties or the congregations worldwide, including the ones in London. Hmm. There are other sentiments, other, uh, it's a complex matter. Hmm. There's, a, there's a huge nexus. And I think one of the things when we discuss these sensitive issues, we should be very careful. I, I, I'm uh, proposing this, I'm submitting this. We should be very, very careful uh, not to make absolute statements. Because we really don't know what the realities are. What we do know is what Gurbani is, we know what our traditions are, we know what our history is, we have certain level of facts available to us, and what we need to learn to do is contextualize current contemporary realities in our tradition. So, you know, when somebody asks me, what should we do? Like, should we protest against this? Should we ask for pardon? You know, all these questions are going on. 
Well, all we know is there's a history of six struggles in the continent of South Asia, and there's a history of six struggles outside of continent of South Asia. One thing which remains very clear in our history of six struggles in the larger thesis is that we have never run away. And you mentioned in Udham Singh earlier, uh, there, is, there are statements on Sukha Jinda. Again, these are revolutionaries mm. who took on the governments of the time. It doesn't matter in which era. And every time, whenever they did whatever they did, uh, which was against fighting injustices in their, in their capacities. You, know, we, you and I can debate about them, but we're trying to understand why they did what they did. They never uh, said that they wanted pardons or amnesties or some relaxations from the governments of the time. In fact, you know, I want to uh, mention one interesting thing that a couple of months ago, I read an article by somebody who's an executioner uh, for the Indian government. And it was an interview printed in the Indian magazine where he, they're asking him, and you know, he's saying this has been his profession for the last 40 years. And he says, I don't want my son to go into this profession. But they asked him, what kind of people did you see? What is your impression of when you are executing someone? This was, in India, last 20 years, there have been very few executions. Is this an executioner from Delhi? Uh, he's actually from UP area. Oh, UP area. Anyway, okay. and, uh, and uh, what's uh, fascinating, which I think your audience and as Sikhs we need to understand and contextualize. And this is not just about Sikhs. This is about every Indian and every human being. There are 7 billion people on Earth, and 1.2 are in India, and 27 million are Sikhs. So this applies to all of us. They asked the executioner, what, did, what used to happen to people who were walking? You know, that's when we say last man, you know, dead man walking, that idea, the last steps he takes. He says, you know, primarily he saw people who were very, very, uh, in a bad state. They couldn't even walk properly. He saw some who were crying. He saw some where they were even urinating while they're walking. He says, but he also saw some, and he uses this word, he says he saw some Khalistani militants who were actually celebrating with jakaras and distributing sweets. And you know, this is our history. Mm. Whether you agree or disagree with the politics of it, whether you disagree with the, uh, uh, the action themselves, whether you agree or disagree with the legality or illegalities of it, one thing remains part of the Sikh tradition is this, that people who embrace martyrdom, regardless of how they did it, they actually use that as a celebration. They, uh, Ratan Singh Pangu writes in the 18th century, there was Baba Gurbak Singh Nehang Shaheed, and he describes, he knows he's going to die today defending Darbar Sahib, but he did it as if he's getting ready to get married. Lada Panke is the word he uses. And you see this in the poetry of Professor Puran Singh, who was originally published 100 years ago from England. Because in India, he wasn't introduced because of jealousy uh, until MS Randhawa introduced him in the 1960s. Hmm. And even Professor Puran Singh has a great poem, which I highly recommend everyone go read, where he says, death is the bride of the brave. This is the kind, I mean, whether you agree or disagree, I mean, hats off, or we say, pug salute to them, that people who are able to do this. And you know, there is a warrior code worldwide. We can agree or disagree on why somebody did what they did, but you got to salute them for how they do it. And I contextualize this from Gurbani's angle as well, that you know these are our pagas, is what I say. Our pagat is not the one who just uh, is a modern day recluse and only does Simran 24 seven. Our Simran is continuing all the time. The way our Simran comes out in public life, in external life, in social and political and economic life is, as Gurbani to me says, pagtan ki chal nirali. The way Sikh walks, the way Sikh talks, the way Sikh proactively does something, reactively does certain things, it does not fit into the system of the world, but it fits into the way Guru told us to way to act. Mm -hmm. um, going on to Shahidi, how uh -huh. does the concept of Shahidi fit into Sikhism? Where did it originate from? Because the um, word Shaheed is uh, not a Punjabi word, is it? No, actually, you know, interestingly, uh, the subcontinent of India the, the, the majority population wasn't even aware of this. It comes from Arabic, which literally means witness unto truth, with a capital T. Not your truth or my truth, but what we equate to divinity or God or Ikovankar, that idea of truth. And somebody who is a witness to truth is considered Shaheed. It's a foreign word to India, and Sikhs introduced it in India. Okay. And, uh, and in fact, I uh, say this uh, historically, when Sikhs disagree with the political activism, that Guru Arjan is the one who showed us a path from Shabbat to Shahadat. How do you bring wisdom onto your life, which prepares you for self-sacrifice as well? So, you know, Sikhs introduced this, and uh, uh, the Sikh tradition invokes it, but Guru Nanak Sahib also uh, forewarns us that everyone who dies in the battlefield is not a Shaheed. He says in Asa Kivar, Lak Surtan Sangram Ranmai Chutai Puran. 
Hundreds and thousands of people are dying in the battlefield in the name of religion. That does not make them a shaheed. Shaheed is the one who is a witness unto truth. Somebody who does it not for personal gains or popularity or to become famous or to protect only his own people or people. He does it or she does it because they are doing it as Vahigru as their witness, Ikkuvankar as their witness. And that tradition in Sikhi is celebrated. No Sikh can run away the way we do Ardas. Hmm. And the first three paragraphs of Ardas are celebrating our history, starting from Guru period all the way till 21st century, 2012, where people contributed by various means, including those who gave up their lives to fight, uh, lives to fight injustice. Quite often we think at uh, the Khalsa Jatha British Isles that we need to maybe get people to realize what the Ardas is that they do day in, day out, because it appears that it's just been, you know, done from the mouth without yes. invoking any meaning. Yes. And uh, it is very meaningful and we... Well, obviously it's meaningful. It's meaningful to those who do it with uh, a great faith and great understanding. Hmm. Otherwise, it's merely a ritual. And I'm not against ritual. I'm just saying ritual transcends it to something beautiful and powerful when it's done with faith and understanding. Yes. So, uh, and that's what gurus ask us to do, that develop awareness, the surut. You know, consciously... Uh, doing something, understanding and feeling, all those things come together in the, in the word surat. So as you were mentioning earlier, you know, if uh, Balwan Singh's case, you know, and contextualizing in today's context, we will be that we need to look at individual, the man, what he did, why he did it. And we should not be asking, as I understand in Sikh tradition, what family does, what individual does is great. I'm not going to discount it. It's not my place to tell him what to do. But he himself is saying, you know, we cannot be asking for amnesties from the government we are the history where we said when somebody kills us, we become double and triple. Hmm. We are the history where we says, where Professor Poonan Singh actually beautifully says, he says, generally the, the, the battles of liberty end up in defeat. And he says that doesn't matter to six. What matters is that the guru had raised a new soul consciousness in us, which did not allow us to remain slaves anymore in India. And yes. That's what the issue is. We are here not to uh, uh, just protest. We are not here just to say that, show them off that we can do this. We are here to set examples when government thinks there are no Sikhs left, when the government thinks that no Sikh will take whatever action uh, to deliver justice. You know, uh, Sham Singh Atariwala did it in Anglo-Sikh wars. Bhutta Singh and Garja Singh did it. And uh, we see examples in the last 30 years. But that does not mean these are the only ways to do it. You know, in the West, we have things called just war theories and guerrilla warfares, and we have to contextualize these things in those uh, systems as well. But the idea is we cannot also run away from our tradition where when every other mean has been exhausted, as Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj said, make sure we exhaust all our means. Make sure we don't ask um, amnesty from those who are killing us. Make sure we are actually connected to the Guru. Ask the Guru, how should I personally deal with this situation? And ask the Guru, how should we panthically deal with this situation? Interestingly, in dealing with the situation, uh, we, there's been a lot of interest from the media. There's been uh, mm -hmm. people within the community have uh, risen up to say, well, hang on, uh, the India appeared to have a moratorium on uh, carrying out death sentences, right. yet it's handed out another death sentence. Yes. Uh, here's a country which is seeking a UN Security Council membership, so mm -hmm. it's got global problems. Yes. Should it carry out a death sentence or risk mm -hmm. causing problems uh, uh, in respect of uh, its uh, global aims? Uh, I see the Indian administration with a massive dilemma. On one hand, uh, Pai Balwan Singh is asking very tough questions of both well, our leaders and and Indian leaders. And you know, uh, I'll, uh, let me back up a bit. So you know what Pai Balwan Singh is saying is, he's not saying is he's actually living it. Hmm. We are trying to uh, provide voices and understandings of what he's doing, why he's doing. He's actually a living example of there are ways to fight injustices, and he is one of them, and he stayed jail. He's not asking for any sort of relaxation at all. Hmm. But what he is proposing to the world, as I see, I mean, I am one voice, and I'm thinking from uh, aloud from a Sikh context and the world context, he's actually presenting to the world and 1.2 billions. Why are there unjust laws? He, he's basically saying you have one laws for six and one laws for non six yes. He's basically saying India is becoming a world power and wants a security council membership or permanent council. But this is where, 
you know, people think India's got a great tiger economy. Even magazines like Economists have written, it's actually an elephant economy. It moves very slow. But it also says recently, just a month ago, the intelligence unit of Economists rated India to be a flawed democracy, which created havoc in Indian circles. And the reason, one of the reasons it said it was a flawed democracy is, including the State Department of US, that there are issues with minority rights. There are issues with religious rights. There are issues with discriminatory uh, uh, regressive policies. And I think you know, the Arab world has seen Arab Spring and the Jasmine Spring. Uh, St. Paul Cathedral has seen for economic rights where the church leaders have intervened. The church must side with those who are poor and who are fighting for these rights. Occupy Wall Street is going on. You know, I'm looking for a day, and maybe this is the trigger point when we will have Occupy Amritsar, Occupy Kartarpur, and Occupy Delhi, and Occupy Bhatinda, and Occupy Ludhiana to make a point that India is a flawed democracy. We need to figure out systems, and India needs to con exercise its conscience. You know, one out of every sixth person in the world right now is Indian. This should be a moral question for them. I'm conscious uh, should be explored and implored to see how to deal with these dichotomies. And from a Sikh angle, when we look at Guru Granth Sahib, there's a very clear message uh, in one of the Shabads by Pagat Das Ji, where he says, you know, the, the reason we are here is to establish a city without sorrow, Begampura. And every Sikh, they, you and I and some of us might not be able to explain what that is, but our psyche knows what that is. This is a place where there is no discrimination. And Pagat Ji says the only way to have stability in that Shabad, which is a vision of Guru Granth Sahib, he says the Begampura, the city without sorrow, will be established. The stability in, the, in our homes, in our communities, in the nations will come when they, whenever there are no second and third class citizens. Domna same are the words he uses. Mm. So basically, anywhere where people feel they are second and third class citizens, there are going to be, to be repercussions which governments and the people of those countries and those constituencies need to really own up to and start figuring out how to solve these issues in, instead of shoving on them under carpet and uh, not dealing with them. Picking up on the word constituency and moving it on to constitution. Yes. Um, the Indian constitution, is it a recipe for disaster that it's created these problems? India says it's a secular country. However, yeah. its constitution feels the need to start defining religious groups and goes and defines Sikhs as Hindus. Yeah. Actually, I mean, uh, this, uh, this is a question which comes up over and over in six circles, but you know, every minority is dealt with like that. Basically, in India, there is a majority-minority relationship where even other minorities are used against each other. For example, six are allowed under the quota system of caste system for admissions and special privileges, mm. but Muslims are not. Yes. So, you know, one minority gets it, but other doesn't. But Christians are able to get their law, but and Muslims are able to get their own religious laws, but Sikhs are not able to get that. My point is, there is an ingenious design in one sense to keep certain minorities happy about certain things and not work with each other to create a pressure group with the majority that, hey, there are some serious problems in the way we are dealing with these things. And you know, I don't think anyone in the world, uh, anyone, uh, individuals, people at large, which includes Sikhs, and Sikhs have their own issues. You know, why, are, why is there a forced identity on us? I was born in India. My birth certificate says I'm a Hindu. One of the reasons I did not get married in India, my wife and I, at the time, my wife-to-be, you know, we wanted to sort of you know, follow the ideas of Guru Sahib and had our own romantic notion to get married in Guru Karlohar. We didn't because our marriage certificate said you are married under the Hindu Marriage Act, which, by the way, mm. in, in, in the British India, Sikhs had an independent marriage yes. act, an unmarriage act. Yes. In independent India, it was we, repealed and replaced by Hindu Marriage Act. So there are issues of those nature, constitutionally speaking, the river water issues, their human rights violations issued. In fact, within the last week, another issue has come up where uh, a former uh, a retired uh, Indian uh, intelligence, of, intelligence officer, M.K. Dhar, he was saying this before the elections in Punjab. He was appealing publicly, and it was printed in Times of India, that, you know, the, 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 the political parties in Punjab should not, including Badal, must not play with the sentiment of six. Because what he had started doing was, one of the, the sitting minister and the candidate again, that he started giving saropas to people who had killed six. Mm. Saropas. Yes. He had, I mean, so, and MK Dhar, not a sick guy, he's saying, this is playing with six sentiments. Please don't do that. But they continued. And as soon as the new CM come in again, 
again, you know, this is not about him personally. It's about the policies which come up, which is where constitutional other regressions come in. That the, one of the things he implemented is everyone in Punjab knows there are so many notorious police officers, and one of them is DGP. And Punjab now is like a police state. It has got seven DGPs in it. Something is not right with the policies, and our question is a fight against regressive policies, fight against those environments which do not allow people to practice their religion, practice their economies, practice their politics freely and fairly. It is a total police state. Once I was traveling in Jalandhar and my car was randomly stopped. The police had a quick chat with the taxi driver and uh, they said, talk to the passenger in the back. And uh, all of a sudden I had a gun pointed in my face oh, wow. and they asked me, what was my father's name? <laughs> They didn't want to know my name. They wanted to know my father's name. So there, it is a police state. There's a lot yeah. of corruption going on. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I, I just, uh, you know, I don't want any of your viewers to feel that we are just venting out on what's happening in Punjab. Point is, these kind of practices are worldwide. They're global. And mm. globally, people... We are in the age of information technology. And you know what governments were used to do before, they have to actually exercise their conscience to come out of it. And basically, we are asking for every Punjabi, every Indian, every Sikh, especially those who are Sikhs and especially those who have taken Amrit. The reason I'm saying is people who take Amrit, they publicly declare that they will follow the instructions in Guru Granth Sahib and they will fight to, uh, against spiritual and political corruption. So it becomes, it is inherent upon those who have declared that their, guru, their father is Guru Gobind Singh. Mm. They have declared their mother is uh, Mata Sahib Kaur. They have declared we belong to Anandpur Sahib. This is a declaration to say our full-time job is to take instructions from the Guru and figure out the best mechanisms to fight against injustices. One of my worries is, is, and I want to actually, I don't know if I'm overanalyzing the situation with mm -hmm. Balwan Singh. Hanji. He's very outspoken. Uh -huh. He's asking very tough questions. Yes. The government's finding it very difficult to hang him. Yes. So they can't stop him asking those questions by hanging him. Punjab, uh, the Punjab jails have said we're not going to hang him. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yet he's asking tough questions. Yeah. Uh, and looking at history. Yes. People like these get randomly shot when they get taken out yeah. and about, and uh, things are set up like that. Yeah. What Do you feel there's chances of something like this happening here, and uh, what should Sikhs be doing about it to make sure that uh, the uh, government in Punjab is making sure Balwan Singh is kept safe uh, while he's in their uh, incarceration? Well, you know, uh, we know from a world political scenario that in a post 9-11 world, the questions on rights didn't used to come up at all. Mm. Governments doing whatever, they, I mean, we have Sri Lanka in front of us. Finally, last week, UN said they're gonna start inquiries on the war crimes. We know what has happened in Middle East or has been happening. But within last year, a new consciousness came up where an average person demands this, average person. So, you know, it's not just about the governments or the political leaderships or the spiritual leaderships. It is actually about you and me. It's about, you know, in Punjabi, they use the word zameer, or they talk about consciousness. They, when average person demands answers, when average person shows up on streets, mm. which is, by the way, Sikh tradition, Sikhs introduce civil disobedience to India. Baba Khadak Singh was the man who introduced it to the Gandhis and Nehru's of India. We are the people, when we demonstrated that by bringing our Gurdwara backs from the occupiers, yes. uh, the stooges of the British government. We demonstrated that politically by setting up Shromani Akali Dal and Akal Takh Saab by doing an Ardas that this is to protect the Sikh political interests. We need to start demonstrating we is you and I, people who call themselves Sikhs of any flavor. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter which part you do. What matters is if you call yourself a Sikh, and there are 27 million of us right now. There are 20 million in the homeland, 7 million in the diaspora. It is our, you know, Punjabi, which they, oh, can they ne, harma chandiya pagat singh ho ron par saade karna ho That's what we are now. Now, you and I, whether you agree or disagree with the politics of pagat singh, the idea is the spirit of Sikhi, the spirit of, the true Punjabi spirit, which, by the way, is married into Sikhi as well. The beautiful things of Punjabi culture were married into Sikh culture. You know, that's why uh, there's a saying that uh, the Punjab vasda guna dena. The Sufis of Punjab adopted the ideas of Sikhi. They're very different than other Sufis. They use vocabularies of Sikhi as well. 
uh, Professor Poonan Singh has written a whole article on it. We need to go back to that idea where Punjab is, where the Hindus, the Muslims, the Sikhs, and the non-religious entities are able to live in a civil and peaceful and a pluralistic manner. And Sikhs have done this before. Sikhs did this 300 years ago. Sikhs did this 200 years ago. Sikhs have done this 100 years ago. It is again our heritage that when nobody speaks against injustices, we need to hear the voices of Pai Balwant Singh and contextualize them in the larger history of Sikh struggles. And then we will start understanding what is happening in India. And this is a great opportunity for every Sikh, every Punjabi, every Indian, every world citizen to also be able to uh, transform India, transform Punjab. Well, w during my father's time, uh, Punjab used to be one of the most educated states in India, but okay. now it's got a massive drugs problem. It's yes. uh, where uh, each time I go back and I see all of a sudden more and more alcohol shops, uh, English wine and beer shops and whatever they usually right. label them as. And uh, it's, uh, it's like become one big state of uh, everyone's under nasha. Uh, well, you know, how, how will you emancipate yourself if you're under nasha? Well, this is where we got to go back to Shabad. We started the show with that. Mm. We got to go back to the wisdom. And Guru Nanak Sahib tackles this. You know, Guru Nanak Sahib tackles everything. We got to go back and actually interpret it instead of saying he tackles everything. And one of the things he says is, he says, I am also interested in intoxication, but the one which is self-induced, not externally induced. Mm. And, you know, people, that's why I said, you know, things, certain things are happening by design. It is not a coincidence that a village will have a two alcohol shops, a desi and a valati, as they call it, yes. a grazi. <laughs> but it does not have a, a school in that village, does not have a teacher for the last 15 years. Mm. Something is massively wrong. Who's issuing these licenses? Who is controlling the drug traffic in Punjab? GNDU, which is a government university, so you know their numbers are gonna be conservatives, yes. but even they put out a study in 2010 saying 70% of the youth of Punjab, 70% is using drugs, which means if you know three youngsters in Punjab, two of them are using drugs. And this is happening because, you see, when you take people away from their language, you take them away from their heritage, you, do, you have regressive practices where they're not educated, as you mentioned. Punjab used to be number one in education in 1900. In 2009, it's 14th. Hmm. So it's directly proportional to our education. As Guru Nanak Sahib has also said, you know, the biggest weapon you can carry with you is knowledge. Aharan mat, ved hathayar. This is the uh, weapon we must carry with us, weapon of knowledge. When Guru Nanak Sahib transferred guruship to Guru Angad, Pailena at the time, Satta Balwan's war in Guru Granth Sahib says, they transferred Gyan Khadag, wisdom and sword. So this is our thing, Miri and Piri. If Baba Deep Singh died fighting at the age of 82 with Khanda, remember at the age of 24 when he came to Guru Gobind Singh Maharaj, he started with the literary tradition. People we have in our tradition are, they are prepared to fight injustice, they're prepared by implanting the Shabad in them. And that's what we need to focus on. It was one of the main things, even during Guru Gobind Singh Ji's time, he was encouraging the Sikhs to become very literary and to start reading, uh, to break down those practices of having to rely on a third party, a Brahmin, a Qazi, or someone else to tell you what yeah. to believe in, to be able to realize for yourself, to give you that azadi. That's right. And uh, the, one of the things is, Shahidi and Azadi, they quite often go together. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, basically the idea is to make us free. Free from what? Anything which is not allowing our potential to grow. Hmm. And Gurbani says, every one of us is divine. If somebody is putting pressure on my divinity to explore, this is how slavery comes in. You know, you watch today's BBC or CNN, they talk about modern slaveries. What are modern slaveries? You know, there's a trafficking of on kind. Drug is another, sex is another, child is another. There are mental slaveries. People are trying to control with the propaganda war. This is what Noam Chomsky from MIT says. Yes. He says now the war is of propaganda. He, has read a, he wrote a book 15 years ago called Public Mind and the Propaganda War. This is where we need to, there are basically, sick idea is that you're gonna hear so many things. Just like in our emails, we get so many emails these days. Do we read every email? We have filters on. We have, this is a junk email, this is a bulk email, and we flag the ones which are important. This is what Shabad Guru was saying, bring Shabad in your life. When infinite wisdom enters, it creates filters. You cannot, it develops siddhak in us is the word. Uh, the intuition, the courage, the discipline, the faith. And when that get develops, 
we are able to filter our noises, we are able to listen to the Guru one-on-one, -on -one. so we don't need the Brahman mentality, we don't need the Kazi mentality, and we also don't need the Yogi mentality. Guru Nanak Sahib questioned all three of them, and he says, when we get out of these mentalities, we get into the divine mentality, which is you have one-on-one -on -one relationship with the divine, you use the divine inspiration, and you might become a great lawyer, you might become a great writer, you might become a great poet, you might become a great warrior, and this is when the only time you know what your capacity is when you allow inspiration and source to be divinity. Mental slavery, actually the work we've been doing at the Gurdwara with other Sikh organizations in, uh, in response of uh, Sikhs having problems in Europe, we found quite often that a lot of the Sikhs we talk to and deal with seem to have this thing that the Indian government will step in and sort their problems out for them. Yeah. But they seem to forget that they're citizens of the UK or citizens of France and that they should be demanding their rights, their freedoms as citizens of those countries. They don't need a third party state to necessarily step in. How ingrained is it within us that uh, we are slaves to, a, to India and that we need India to represent us in our problems or should we be representing, uh, getting freedom and representing ourselves as individuals, as Sikhs for our problems, not as people of a particular uh, third party nation when we have a problem, let's say in Europe or yeah. France here or here in the UK? I mean, it's a, it's a great question, which uh, honestly we haven't had enough genuine dialogue on to figure out how Sikhs should be dealing with, but I'll offer a couple of things to think about. Have you ever seen that a Catholic church, which is headquartered uh, very close from here, only an hour flight I would take it, yes. that they will actually try to ask Italian government, Never. what should we do? And whatever order the issue, it's, it, it's uh, binding on each Catholic to figure out how to accept it, hmm. everywhere in the world. Our thing is, that used to happen to us, even when somebody served under Ranjit Singh or the Mughal Empire, and we'll include Indian Empire, we'll include Punjab Police, which is the case we were discussing earlier. Mm. The order used to come from Akal Takht, and every Sikh used to bow to it. We need to figure out how to make independent Akal Takht again. This is our control and command center. Because we don't have that platform, and you know, Sikh psyche has known that people have with bad intentions have occupied it. There was a stooge of British government yes. who occupied it 100 years ago. Similar situation is happening now. Hmm. We salute the office of Jathedar. We salute Akal Tak Sahib. In our psyche, we knew that bad people can occupy it. But what has happened since 1995 is we had stopped saluting Akal Tak Sahib. Every Sikh from their mentally and from their money as well as physically, we need to really come up with a strategy on how to have Akal Takht, which is independent. Yes. Second thing I want to add to it, uh, you know, uh, just... my nationality happens to be American now. Yes. Yeah? So, you know, in America and France, there is a big comparison, which Tokyo will actually did when he was visiting. He said, you know, in Bastille, when the revolution happened, hmm. the, the government of France decided that the, its government will give rights to the people. When the revolution happened in America, which I think is akin to the ideals of Sikhi as well, they decided the government doesn't give right. It's a God-given right. Government just assures that right is practiced properly. And this is us. We should work with wherever we are citizens to work with those governments as partners while invoking Sikh ethos, which come from Guru Granth Sahib. Okay. Harinder Singh of Sikh Research Institute, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. We've only, we're about to finish. And as that sort of leaving thought on the program, I'd like to leave with the Sangat that the thought of an independent Akal Takat, Guru Khalsa Panth. If we want freedom, we need to make our institutions free. If we want Azadi, our institutions need to be Azad of political corruption. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And thank you, Harinder Singh. Vai Gujika Khalsa, Vai Gujiki Fateh.